This is America, a beautiful necklace of rare gems, different colors from different places. If they could speak, you'd hear 171 languages. But the miracle that produced this necklace 233 years ago, in the greatest burst of freedom the world has ever seen, is this thin, fragile piece of string that holds all this diversity together and has made you the strongest and most prosperous nation on earth, allowing us all to remain different but unified as a people with this the common bond, the thin, fragile piece of string, I am an American. The enemy within condemns this belief by shouting our differences are our strength. Yes, but only if you continue to be united behind one country, one culture, one language, one rule of law. There is no unity in a pluralistic society unless there is a common bond you all support. You cannot unite around differences. If this common bond is broken by any means, then there can be no common sense because common history, common values, and common law no longer exist and you've lost the United States of America, regardless of what state the economy is in. Now the enemy within say you must destroy American sovereignty, open your borders, and become an international halfway house for the rest of the world, all paid for, of course, by you, which you can no longer now afford. Global democracy, global economy, global governance, lumping all human beings into a homogenous mankind that does not now nor ever has existed in reality, convincing you that nationalism and pride in country is extremism. Engage the world, yes, but never surrender your independence to it. The dismantlers of your history, your traditions, your founding principles are the elite brain dead who have redefined the definition of liberalism to mean you serve the world best by giving away America's strength, raising taxes on the 60% of taxpayers who pay for the 40% who pay nothing reinstigating the welfare state with more giveaway programs that effectively erase all dignity and personal responsibility and declare all minorities are helpless victims, not independent human beings. They've rewritten American history and have already brainwashed two generations of your children, taught to blame America first, to criticize before understanding the generosity and nobility of their own history. What you teach in your schools today becomes government policy tomorrow. How can you expect young people to appreciate their country when they've been taught a putrid lie by these dismantlers that America is the cause of all evil in the world? The dismantlers are the enemy, but not the problem. Then what or who is breaking our common bond? If you're the one who says our children are our future, but do nothing to stop the shameful disparity of quality of education between suburban schools and inner city schools with 50% of black and brown children dropping out, becoming drug addicts, alcoholics, unemployable, with an 80% possibility of being a burden to society the rest of their lives, then you are the problem. If you are not on the phone, in the school board meetings, demanding excellence, but instead are pleading for a breakdown of the common bond with more bilingual education, costing the taxpayer billions of dollars and doing nothing to hasten assimilation, then you are breaking the common bond. Billions of dollars you can no longer afford. If you're all for lowering standards so everyone can pass, pushing stupidity and mediocrity toward graduation, then you are the problem. If you allow the dismantlers to label it anti-immigrant because you demand all newcomers enter legally, learn English, our history, and salute our flag, then you are the problem. It's not about discrimination, immigrant bashing, or a lack of charity. It's about maintaining the glue of your common bond and the rule of law. If you don't rise up and throw out your insane mayors and hypocritical bishops who declare sanctuary cities for lawbreakers, inviting more lawbreakers to come and drink at the well of the taxpayers' money, then you are the problem. If you're a white person who doesn't recognize the effects of slavery and years of welfare dependence have adversely affected black people, then you are the problem. If you're a black person who calls all criticism racist and halt all intelligent discussion, then you are the problem. I wrote the first anti-slavery essay in America in 1775. I founded the first abolitionist society in the country and wrote the first rough draft of the Declaration of Independence, specifically calling for an end to slavery. I know the ugly face of racism, and modern America is not a nation of racists. Opportunity and anti-discrimination laws have leveled the playing field. Take advantage of both and stop thinking of yourself as a victim. And understand, all conflicts are simply memories of the past. If you can't get over them, you condemn yourself to be destroyed by them. It's time to put away the race cards and unite behind the common bond. It's the strength without which there is no America.
Your brave servicemen and women, black, white, brown, red, and all the colors in between, are giving their lives and their blood to protect you from the enemy without. It's your turn to stand up and defeat the enemy within. Restore your common bond. There have been ten generations of Americans since this nation was founded. Each left this country in a little better condition than when they inherited it from their parents. Yours is the first generation at risk of doing the opposite. Let that not be your epitaph. When America was being torn apart by the dividers and the dismantlers, the silent majority stood by and did nothing. Join the second American Revolution and fight for the common bond. It's your first and last best hope to preserve the life of America. My name is Thomas Paine, yes. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. May you never be numbered among those cowards. Take Back America now!